Hey, what's up? It's your girl Tamara, aka your Girl from Harlem. And what's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. And this is the God Show Culture Report. The Culture Report. I feel like we. Got, I feel like Tamara's trying to grab a rhythm. Let's just let's practice it. This is the God Show Culture Report. Uh, wait, you need a gap? No, no. Or this is the God Show. The culture report. There we go. Like it's just a pause because I feel like you lose your breath. I don't want you okay, to lose your you breath. Gotta gotta be smooth. With but it. before we start, shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to our, shout out to our people that are following. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. We need y'all support, man. Come on, man. Share it with a friend. If you if you subscribe, DM me. You subscribe. We'll follow you. We'll give you a shout out from my page and their page. We need help, man. Let's go subscribe. We're trying to get to number one, and right yeah. now we in the top seventy. Let's go, guys. On the way there. Okay, so um, I want to start off as a little sad, but we got to talk about it. Um, Gilly's son was killed um, last week in Philly um, due to gun violence. Um, it's really sad because they are one of the people who are so invested in their community, so into giving back and sending the ladder back down and kind of trying to prevent this type of stuff from happening um so what are your thoughts on the situation and how do you feel um no no parents have to bury their child agreed it's we got to find a way to start talking to each other because we be you know i think i think we say i kill that nigga so easily like you know sometimes i'm like i kill that nigga he do something like, we don't really think about the effects that it has on it. And, you know, these young guys, man, they just don't really have no guidance, man. Like, and the crazy, the sad part is that they killed the son of someone who was trying to guide them. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's crazy because if Gilly still shows up for the community, man, they better give that man a statue next to Rocky. But because I don't know if I can go back. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I probably, I don't think I would give, I don't think I would care about it. No, my, my kid, it's like, bro. Fuck all y'all. Fuck yeah, everybody. I'm, I, I'm not even from there no more. I'm leaving. Yeah, to be able to turn that type of pain into passion what? and to even be able to go out there and speak to those people, that I, I can't even imagine nah. to stomach that. But um, Wallow did say that they're still going to continue doing their work in Philly and that they're going to use this as motivation. And I just think that that's very honorable in itself. To So you could see that they're really not just talking it. They're really, really living it to the point where – his biggest, the biggest loss you could take in front of the world, damn near losing your child to street violence, the same thing that you're trying to advocate against. Um, so, yeah, sending love and prayers and condolences to that whole family. And I just hope that, like I said, they are able to turn their pain into passion and they could go it's out no, there. It's, it's nothing that can be fixed. It's nothing that can be done when death happens, bro. Death is permanent. Yeah. It's not like we could talk about it. It's not mm -hmm. like we can revisit it and fix it. It's nothing to be done, bro. That's why I'm like, man, send the prayers to Gilly, bro. It's big prayers, bro. I can't even I can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. I always say, like, it, it, as long as I get to bury my mother, I'll be fine. I, don't, I would never want to put my mother through that type of pain of burying her child. So, yeah, hopefully we got to black on black crime. We lo like to act like it's not existing because we throw our arms up anytime the police do something, anytime somebody of another race does something, but we have to hold ourselves accountable too. We have to, like you said, learn how to talk to each other. That's one of the biggest lessons my mother tried to teach me, which didn't resonate with me because I have a horrible temper, but um, being able to express yourself when you're mad and not going straight to violence. Growing up in Harlem, I was taught you got to beat the biggest person up in the room to get respect. And I think that that's a, that's something that we have in our underlining as black people. We think that some reason we think disrespect gets you respect. You know what's so crazy? I'm glad you brought that up. I was thinking about something, y'all. I don't know what it is about black people with us. Because I, cause, cause I saw this footage of, this is random, by the way. This is just how my thoughts work for everybody listening. I saw this footage of a black guy, a young black kid, beating up an older white man, right? And the way to, and me, as, as soon as I saw it, all I thought to myself was, if that was me, I would have killed the guy. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. Like, I'm just telling y'all the truth. But then, I, but then they interviewed the older guy. He was like, man, the guy just went to town on me. I don't know what's wrong. And I was like, fuck what's wrong. Mm -hmm. He needs to die. <laughs> but it's something about us. And I don't know if it's, it's rooted in slavery, embarrassment, uh, emotions. I don't, know what it's, I don't know what it is exactly. But all I do know is that there's something that with black men that we feel like, I, you hurt us and kill our pride that we have mm. to do something to ret in return to you that's like permanent. I don't know what it is. Like, 
Like it's like if you get a, if you get your ass whipped, just get your ass whipped. But for us, it's like he kicked our ass, we killing him. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, I and, I, and I'm just bringing this up that's just like something that I noticed. It was just like a thought I had. I was like, damn, why do we, like, I couldn't imagine getting beat up and be like, man, a God just came and started beating me up for something in my ego would make me feel like I'm not a man. I and I have to, like, do something to that guy. Like, literally, if somebody did that to me, I'm literally putting myself in that situation saying, someone did that to me, how would I respond? Like, if somebody, like, if, would I be like, like, I would want to hurt the guy. Yeah. Like, death, like, I, it's dudes that did shit to me in high school that I still kind of want to kill. I got two people. I'm, I'm not going to, but I'm just being honest with you. Like, I don't know what it is about black men where we just can't let it go. But that pride, like we have to said. get into whatever's rooted in that because this shit is getting bad. It's scary. Yeah. Fuck, man. Speaking of scary, um, G Herbo's going back to jail. Um, <sighs> he, got, he admitted to <laughs> scamming to jumpstart his career but the weird thing is that he was kind of already in the mainstream and still was scamming so it was like the system is rigged it is rigged against us there's nothing that we can do about it it's not rigged against us let me take that back it's rigged against anyone who doesn't have the information okay. and most of the time that's us right but because the system is rigged you see these guys going to jail doing stuff that is like that I think other people do and probably don't go through that same time. So for me, it's just like, bro, we can't fuck up. I don't know what it is about today's time where lifestyle matters more than life. Mm. It's so interesting to me that, you know, the lifestyle matters, matters more than life. Like as long as I got the lifestyle, fuck my life. Like it's just weird to me. So when I said I was G Herbal, I hope it's something that happened five, six, five, seven years ago. It did happen a while ago. It is old stuff, but that that's another thing too. Like you work so hard to leave your old life behind, and then while you're at the peak of your new life, them ghosts come back to get you, and now you in jail. You done. You did everything. You a family man. You doing the right thing, trying to provide for your family, and now you got to go to jail for something that you did before you every was time even I, this person. Every time I think, every time I think about doing something stupid, I ask myself: A year from now, is this move gonna affect? Is gonna be affect that me a year from now in a positive way? So like it's like yo come in here and get it's like come get ten thousand dollars okay ten thousand dollars I'm gonna blow through that shit in three fucking weeks that's not gonna last ten years that's not gonna last a year so I just don't understand taking those chances like and if you pay attention you got rappers being like rappers is getting indicted mm -hmm. with the Rico you got I mean like dog think about how many rappers Casanova just got sentenced mm -hmm. um uh, Troy Avis sentenced G Herbo is sentenced like oh they have it out for us. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we poking the bear, saying how rich we are, making mm -hmm. other people think they could do it. But it's something going on that's fucking us up. So I, I don't know. I just we gotta we gotta we gotta look into that. We gotta do a deeper dive into that. Like what's going on with us? Because I'm not doing no mail fraud. I'm not doing no fraud <laughs> right now. I'm gonna fuck you. Tell me hundred million dollars? Nah. But it's hard to see that light. Like if you're still in the hood and you're trying to make it and you're trying to get studio time and you're trying to find a way to fund your careers, like people start rolling the dice and doing things that'll risk it in the long run. But like you said, will this be a good idea a year from now? Like you'll feel good tomorrow. I'll have a pocket full like of even, money. Like even in, even in the middle, even, if, even in the center of being mad, what I do is, is I say to myself, is this shit worth me having to pay fees, fines, dealing with it a year from now. If it's worth it, then I'm going for it. If it's not, like, if my kids, I don't care. I'm not thinking straight. But sometimes it's like, man, that shit ain't worth it. I ain't going, I'm not putting myself in a position to take, have somebody tell me when to go to sleep and eat and when to get up. I'm not doing that. And then here's the other part of it. We celebrate the rappers who go to jail for years and come out and do it the right way. We celebrate them. We celebrate them. Bobby Smurda got out, and Bobby Smurda, Bobby Smurda didn't of. snitch. He st he stood tall, took his time, and he went on a whole tour. Everybody, Bobby Smurda's home. We love him. Everybody want to take pictures with him. Can we celebrate people that do it the right way? Yeah, but he he hasn't had a hit since he came home. Like well, that's on him. But I feel like if they did celebrate him properly, I feel like producers should be lining up. He should be having they great were. features. He should they were. be like they were they were lining up. He just didn't make a hit. I think he was so happy to be home from jail. He wanted to hit pussy. Yeah, no, he definitely. I think was. he was so happy to be home he from jail that he was like on a tour. And I, I think that I think that there is a okay. So if an artist is listening, there's a there is a a magic uh, combination that works for you. I always tell artists if you were in that studio in the hood and you had your cousin who was stupid and this other guy and it was this, 
keep creating that environment while you're creating. The minute that the, the girls start getting a little, you know, little snow bunny-ish, you know, mm. and now you're not drinking malt liquor, y'all drinking mm. high level, you know, wine and shit, and then you got like other white guys in the building that's just cool. Hey, nigga, you finished. Yeah. Like, one thing, like, I don't care. Like, Do Teron is works. in the room right now mm -hmm. doing what he's done since I managed him in 2000, started managing him in 2006. We have not changed the combination. We've gotten better, but we've not changed the work, the way we work. Did you ever try to change it and say, hold on, Hell we got to nah. go back? Are you always stuck with Hell this? Hell no. Nah. I was always afraid. It's like, imagine like, imagine like get, finding this one spot to stand and it works for you and you finally find it. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. I'm going to keep building on this spot. Well, that's the problem. People always think there's a better spot. Boom. You got to be confident mm. in yourself and what you're doing. So that's what I would say. That's a good one. Okay. Um, I think you're going to like this one. Let's so, go. What are we doing? Sexy Red. Um, she did. She performed that. Where the niggas loud. at? Looking for the hoe. Look, look at you me. like my voice? It turned you on. By the way, you know who told me about that? About them? Who? Uh, uh, sexy Red? Who told you about Sexy Red? You. Oh, me. I get a point on the board. I be trying to be the first one. I'm always DMing Ray, new artist, so I could she, by the act way, like... All you artists out there that are trying the the to get to me, <laughs> no one sends me music that I listen to more than Tamira. Even more than my A&R guys. <laughs> no one sends me more shit to say... Tamira's the first person to send me Glorilla. She's the first, per first person to send me Sexy Red. She's always like, I don't know what it is. But in that like, eggplant song, the peaches and yep, the eggplant, I yep. sent that first, so, you know... That's that week I went outside to the club and I was like shazamming all the music. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, so Sexy Red, she opened her Rolling Loud performance and she had two men on chains kind of door walking them. Um, good for her. The people were upset. Were, but they, she didn't were, they, were they straight men or gay men? That's a good question. Because if they was a straight man and they did that, they need their ass whipped. That's a good question. Well, I didn't I even think that. I don't that. give a fuck. That's, see, I'm trying to say, y'all, we are, we, we, we are motherfucking lost. Listen, the demasculizing of the black man lost. is happening. I wish the fuck somebody would put a chain on my neck as a straight man for the sake of the show. It's, we, were, we fought 400 years to get our chains on our necks. By the way, I don't think a woman should do it either. But oh, either. women, I know a couple of women who really enjoy that. Who enjoy being submissive, tied up. I don't know a man that does. I'm pretty sure there's men a man do. in my circle that do. Men have weird fetishes. Sure my, 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 okay, Jack, no. <laughs> Jack's you, like, you, 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 you. No, 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 no. A little paddle. You don't, get, you don't enjoy getting tied up and submitted to? You don't, okay, a little so paddle there on it the is. butt? No. There it is. Nothing. There, there it so, is. But... The, my what I want to know is so didn't Han Sukiana get under fire for doing this with um Nelly Chopper a while ago? So it's like yeah, she got fired. I mean, she, but but the double standard is happening. It's just, Sukiana is just ghetto. <laughs> I mean, like Sukiana is that cousin that you just like you got to warn I'm people before she comes. Yeah, she come in and she might say some wild shit. Sukiana is that, so I think it just matches her brand, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, that's but there have to be limits and ex but we we won't go there. But the double standard that happened where she didn't like people weren't mad at her. Like when we first said it, you was like, "Oh, go, shout out to her." But when a guy did it and he had two girls, the I people said, were up in arms. "No, no, oh no, no." Oh, I already said, said cause when when the girl did it. Yeah, I said good for her, but yeah. I also asked whether the guy straight or gay. That's important. What if they was straight gay? I mean, then it's cool. Well, I mean, the reason why I ask about gay is because I think there is a, I think there's a sexual piece to this, and oh, okay. it's usually the person that likes to be taken to pound town, <laughs> uh, not the pounder of the towns. Not the pounder of the towns. And if you are gay, you, I don't know. I mean, I'm okay. pretty sure some of them, <laughs> most of them, might be a little go different. to pound town. Okay. Have been, so I'm like, it probably works. I get it. That's why I asked if they gay or straight. Because they're going to pound town. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> you know, they like to be <laughs> bent over and slapped on their ass. The fuck you want me to do? Not necessarily right. Everybody has preferences. I mean, some gay men are like, I, I remember that one gay man that did that video that was like, um, they call me such or such and I, I break men down. I was like, that nigga, I thought he was straight. It, was, it went viral. It was all over the internet. The guy was like, yeah, you know, I fuck men and I, I, I make them walk. They can't walk straight after me. And I missed I, that clip. I was like, <laughs> okay. 
I didn't yeah, see yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Because I remember Kane commented like, "He's that nigga." <laughs> Kane what? I was like, Kane. Who? I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And Kane responded to my comment like, "A god." <laughs> Cause see him <laughs> now. Fuck, nigga. <laughs> so who? Wait, hold on. I wasn't gonna talk about it, but we kind of on topic. So Jess Hilarious had said something about um, there's this big argument with I don't even know. Trans women and born women. Ooh, it's called let's like, get into it. It's, let's get it's into it. Like save let's women. It. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. I, I, I said this comment. Cis women. The word. They better go. To the hell. word cis. If they'll put it under me, is going to be cis, which in the dictionary means biological. Hear me, hear me out. The word cis women are being brought to the chat by the LGBTQ. Community. Get me out the chat. Because the alphabet community. That's how the, because control. they're because you guys allowed them to be. <laughs> you guys is always the women, women allowed. Always Let me ask you, like 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 have we ever had a situation where there was a trans man that another trans man had another straight man or biological trans, man had to correct? Because women, let me tell. Women you know don't. We, I can't tell you why men. we don't. Can I tell you why we don't correct them? Because I don't, I don't give a fuck how many times you say you're a man. You know you ain't. You ain't a fucking man. Right. You are a trans man. You're not a man. I'm a man. You are a trans man. That's why the word trans is there for you, right? Because you made a decision to transition to another sex. You mm -hmm. are a trans man. I am a man. If you ever refer to me as a cis man, we have a problem. <laughs> we will have an I issue. I am not a cis man. I am a man. You need the title in front of yours because you are the one that made the change. Mm. Now, women have stood up for trans women and to be honest with you, it was always a little interesting to me because I'm like, you know, that's a man that'll beat your ass, right? right? Like, <laughs> you're just a that's really how I feel about man, them being right? in sports. They should that, not like, be. In they want to be in y'all sports. They want to be in y'all bathroom. They want to do all that, you know. So I love that Jess Hilarious went at it because the first person to read the trans woman was Candace Owens, mm -hmm. who I fuck with, by the way. I don't know what's going on this year, like 2023. Candace I've been agreeing with everything she's been Candace saying. Been going and and Candace like, said, you think you're a woman because you decide to be a woman? Like, And it's weird to me how they get so, so mad, mad mm -hmm. when you don't refer to them as men or women. Bro, it is, it is to me, it is partially, partially mental, mental health. I knew you was going to say that. It has to be. It has to be. It, it, it's like, like, like if, we, if we remove times, we mm -hmm. just remove the times we're in where it's political chat and you got to say things right. Let's just remove the time. Mm -hmm. Any other time in history. They would call you. They would be like, nigga, you crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but because of today's time, you're transphobic. Or, no, we're not. The, I'm not transphobic. Everybody I has just, so many rights. I just don't tired of believe what you believe. Mind you. I believe I'm that nigga. <laughs> you might not. That is not, but that, but guess what? I have to carry my life, live in my life as someone who believes they're that nigga and get the, the benefits and the penalties of that, mm -hmm. right? And the same way you have to live your life. Like, I'm not, imagine me saying I'm that nigga and I, I go into the White House and the president is like, how you doing, sir? What's your name? That nigga. Right. Love and it. Biden is like, Biden is like, what do you want? Nigga, what I just said. My name is that nigga. And if they you refer me call me that. by my name or... I will call you niggaphobic. <laughs> niggaphobic, love it. You you don't want me to be. I can't be that nigga to you. Then you are niggaphobic. That don't make sense, bro. Right. I am not transphobic. I'm not none of those. I just don't agree with your approach to how we have to treat you. Not your approach to life. That's your decision. Your approach to how I have to now treat you because you woke up and decided that you're you are something that my eyes see differently of. Mm. Like I see I'm supposed you to as, tell my brain I, what so they're now seeing. I see you as a woman. Right. And here's the crazy part. You got people that are saying that they are trans and they ain't even took a, a surgery, a pill, or nothing. They just still talking like, yeah, nigga, I'm trans. What's up, nigga? I'm a trans woman. Like, bro, so my ears and my eyes are lying to me? Right. No, you are a fucking man that wants to be a woman. And that's okay. But I'm not going to treat you like that. And if I catch you in the bathroom with my daughter, I'm going to fuck you up. Agreed. It's, and that's just that's just natural. That was a big thing because I'm in a sorority and I, my I, sorority just started taking I, trans. I wouldn't be, feel comfortable living in a sorority I, house with I'm, I'm about to say a some, guy I'm, running around with a wee wee. I'm about to say something very controversial. And um, a good friend of mine brought this to my attention. Um, and you know what he said? Do you believe that people could be born gay? Yes or no? I don't know the answer to that. Because I think life 
happens People to you, say you they're figure born out what that you way, right? want. And, yeah. if they, and if they're born but gay. But you shouldn't be born sexually. Hit me out. Nothing. If they say they're born gay, we have to acknowledge that they were born that way, right? And it is. And by the way, that's the right thing to do. The right thing to do is someone says, I'm gay. Okay, of course. I don't mind. You were born that way. That's fine. But a, good, a great friend of mine, who I'm not going to say his name, very, 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 very successful man, was like, if you can be born gay, then you can be born a pedophile. And now it gets a little tricky because now what happens if people are like, I'm a pedophile, but I like, I can't help that. I like, they can't help it. Mm-hmm. It is the same concept. It is a mental illness that makes you think something is not right. By the way, I got some mental illnesses either too. I could be, I'm addicted to sex and a whole lot of other shit. <laughs> I got mental, by the way, I'm not judging. You understand what I'm trying to say? That's the whole point of what we do. I'm not judging, but I'm saying if you can be born gay, then why can't you be born a pedophile? You think it's chemicals? That makes so being gay is not pedophile? a chemical imbalance, but being a pedophile is? Being a pedophile is a mental thing. Being gay is a mental thing. Being gay is a mental thing. How is it a mental thing? It's, you're attracted to... You're attracted... Yeah, but 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 they well, but hit me out. But they can't help it. They can't help who it. Who can't help it? The pedophiles? the pedophiles. They can't help it. No, 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 no. Well, now, they, mind you, it's I, on I, the I'm, way. I'm just, I'm, I'm, they're gonna have ageless love. I, That's I'm what they're calling it. I'm allowing ageless you guys love. to see that sometimes we gotta sometimes switch Put the seat the out on the table because yeah. that school could be coming next. They could oh, be no, pedophiles. Coming. Could be like we want we want rights. Too. They want rights. They trying to have ageless love. That's what they calling it. Ageless exactly. love. They, it's a whole group. By the They're way, really by the way, by the way, love. by the way, Democrats are fucking stupid. Oh, don't get me started on them. That's why Republicans run this world. Because mm-hmm. Republicans are saying you can believe all that shit, but here's how we do it right. over here. You got to Democrats stand are like, no, make everybody make everybody comfortable. Everybody has to be comfortable in America, except that. for the people that's not like, except for the Republicans. Those but that's why when Americans to... go to other places, they asses get thrown in jail and all that stuff because we're so used to the freedom that we have in America to be whatever the fuck you want. And then you go other places and they not with that shit. Now you looking stupid. Like there was that guy who got arrested for wearing a rainbow flag on his shirt. And he know that he was going to one of them countries where they did not support that. You cannot bring your American bullshit to other people's stuff. You got to stand on stuff. I just don't get it because we were raised when I was in school, we were raised. The Bible was the foundation. And now well, the Bibles can't be the foundation now because there are too many people who have agendas. And now we got to kill that. But I'm saying, how did I go from in my lifetime? I'm only 30, 33 years old. Is no reason why so everything she, I was notice how she said when only I, so eighteen year old kid you are, you are a cougar don't get don't yeah get no I get that I get ahead, that I listen <laughs> I want to wear my age that's why I don't dye my hair because I'm gonna age gracefully anyway the issue that I'm having is everything that I was taught as a child growing up none of that exists anymore none of the foundations that we were taught about love and family and even the basics of men being providers all of that is out the window now. So now as an adult, you're trying to navigate and look at the world where everything you were taught is literally wrong now. Like, you, you're and, not supposed and, to feel those ways towards people. What? You're not supposed to look at them and think that's wrong. Like You can't change people's feelings or you can change their reactions. I agree. You can't, you, that's the problem with the world. You want people, I, listen, I'm not going to disrespect you. Right. But I'm going to, if you ask me how I feel, I'm going to say it. But you can't be mad, like you said, that's not fair. That's not, you can't tell me how to feel. You can't tell me that I'm supposed to agree with you on wanting to be a pedophile or be transgendered or agree that you woke up in the wrong body. You cannot force that on me. You cannot tell me that I'm a bad person because we don't agree on certain things. That's not fair. I think that we got into the society where everybody's trying to please everybody and make everybody feel like that's not society. That's the Democrats. Right. Just the Democrats. the Democrats. Yeah, because the Republicans, are, don't, Republicans give don't give a fuck. fuck. They want to erase, erase anything that's not with the agenda of America. Yeah, but the only, like, as a half Republican, because that's what I like to think I am, half Republican, because I don't have enough money to fully be a Republican. No, 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 no. you could be a Republican. <laughs> but Republicans, Republicans are not, a, Republicans is a mentality. It's not about money. They that's are some, they, they, they full of shit too. That's what they but say. it's not a lot of them. It's not a lot of them. So that's why they win. But they're trying to take slavery out of history and say that slavery benefited black people. And that's where I draw I the line. I don't know if they said that slavery benefited black people. It's I literally, see, in Florida, it's in the that. school. A woman said that. Now I don't know if they said, said that. They, no, it's literally. No, it, was, it, was a, it was a black female pastor that said it. And I, I'm, I'm, that's the, a woman said that. Black people for, uh, um, 
Um, but you don't got to implement that in school policies and the teaching curriculum. I don't believe in teaching about slavery, period. I'm not going to get on that one. I don't believe in teaching about slavery. I I think that slavery is something that we should learn about when we get older. How old? Old enough where you're... High school? Old enough where you're... I would say... I would actually say senior year high school. I I don't know. I think think it's very immature to teach seven-year-olds that are in classes with white people and black people. All of us in the same class start talking about your ancestors yeah. sold his ancestors and your ancestors. Like, it's just like, I just remember seeing, awkward. I don't know. I'm, I remember being a young man watching higher learning. I teach the pilgrims. Higher learning. Indians. Everybody ever seen that movie? Yeah. And this remember the scene in the movie. He's like, who's the monkey now? Who? And I remember leaving the movie saying, I want to fuck a white person up. I was a kid though. Like I'm like I want to fuck a white. I obviously, obviously didn't, but I, it, that scene I wasn't mature enough to be able to understand that 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 was acting. You know what I'm saying? That shit. Put, I shit felt like he was doing that to me. So my point is, is that we we should save the slavery talk for later in life, because it, if I'm being so honest with you guys, so honest, do not kill me, but it's not that important right now. It's not. You want to get me, get me. It's not that important. It's me telling my, my six-year-old daughter that we were slaves. What the fuck does that help her? How does that benefit her? I want to know. Does she say at six, oh, wow, now I got to move different. She's going to be like, okay, what the hell does that mean? So why are we forcing it on? I'm not saying tell your six-year-old. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know what age you should start that because I I try to reflect on this myself. And I just remember fifth grade being more of a I, having that conversation can I, can, a little bit. Can deeper. I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Let's say let's say you're a porn star. Okay. And you have kids. Yes. So anybody here can, everybody here can answer. At what point do you tell your kids? Do you let your kids know there might be a video of mom or dad online fucking? At what age? You, Eighth grade. He said eighth grade. Eighth grade. Oh, eighth grade. So about but 13, in fifth 14. grade, they gonna show that. Them little, these little kids now. Bro, somebody gonna come. What, show at, what age would you, if you was a porn star? What age would you start telling your kids you was a porn star? Eleven. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That don't mean they gonna find you. <laughs> somebody gonna find. <laughs> that don't mean they gonna find you. I'm just saying. When are you gonna tell them that you did it? Like, don't search. <laughs> uh, daddy's name online if you don't want to see daddy dropping dick off in somebody. When do you want? When do you think it's appropriate to tell your kids? I about to say I about to say fifteen, sixteen. That's when you start learning about slavery. When you're mature enough to understand that it matters. Now, you, when you're mature enough to run into shit, that's when you should learn. Not when you're ten years old. You think older, than, younger than that, Jack? Well, you have a problem. Not six or seven. I was too, by the way. How was y'all getting porn? Porn wasn't on y'all phone back then. Y'all was going in the stash? No, my, no, my, my, the dirty. My, 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 my aunt had a boyfriend that had a porn stash of magazines, and I, every chance I get, I would go into the bed and look at the pornos. And I was like five years old. But I was a curious young man, and I've kept that energy up until now, so don't judge me. That still works for me. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad. All right. And you Let's know, go to the next where one. was I at? Um, why N W Melly was found not guilty? No, not not mistrial. guilty. He had a mistrial. Um, do you think they're gonna retrial him? And you seen that stupid shit Annalie Chopper did? Well, he reenacted the shooting in the back of the car. Y'all didn't see that? And then Fifty Cent posted it. No. Now Anybody? something is wrong with us in this society, y'all. Like something is wrong with us. Like we think murder. We think. We think we living in GTA. Yes, definitely. Like, we really, like, these young kids think they live, like, nigga, people really are dying, y'all. Those are really people's kids, cousins, brothers and sisters that are getting killed. It's never to make, be made it, to, it's never something to make a joke about. So when Chopper did that, I was like, come on. Like, I would, that was one of the moments I was like, I wish I still worked with him. Because I would be like, bro, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always had it. But I'm just saying, in general, like, bro, these little niggas is... We, they are tripping, y'all. Last time I, I was in Harlem, and um, I remember one of my friends telling me a story about how their little cousin, 15-year-old, um, came up to him asking for a gun. And he he just didn't take it serious. Like, boy, you 15. Like, you your beef ain't that serious. They gonna jump you and go about your business. Two days later, his, his cousin, his little cousin got arrested for killing a boy because they tried to jump him, and he shot the little boy. We have to start interjecting. Like, that's why the OGs are important. If your kids, if... if if people are coming to you telling you that they're in danger, you have to take these kids' feelings 
real. Like, I think that there's steps that happen before the gun gets in the hand. They have to figure out where to go to Why get the gun. Why do you think gun. kids are so violent? Why do you think kids are so violent? Because that's what's portrayed. Look, look at what they're listening to. The, the video games, the music. And, and the movies. Movies, and the TV. So, okay, so, that's what, all they being so y'all are proving my fucking point. There should be an age where you. Sh- there should be an age where you should have be allowed to listen to rap music too. Because if we don't, we don't treat. We need to treat rap music the same way we treat porn. Same way because it's it's all well, in I the have music. A stronger like, mental. Mm-hmm. You have to. That's a good one, yeah. Because I wasn't allowed to watch BT growing up. I didn't. But see, we had different music growing up. I had Little Bow Wow. I had. Um, Soldier Boy and Little Romeo and Brandy and Monica, Britney Spears. Like, we had our teenagers to look up to. There's no in between now. The kids are listening, shopping, wearing, watching the same shit as adults. There's no preteen stage anymore. The, they wear the same hairstyles, shopping at Fashion Nova, listening to Drake. What's the difference between a 13-year-old girl and a 30-year-old girl? They're going to have the same hairstyle. They're going to wear lashes. They're going to have nails on. Like, it's just, there's no balance. So I agree with you. We should start implementing. But that's why they used to have them parental warnings and stuff. Maybe you couldn't get CDs if you wasn't 18. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, they need to bring that back. We need, we need, we need, we need to bring censorship back because we don't, we don't factor in that some of these people are too immature to hear what they're hearing mm-hmm. and it's triggering them to do dumb shit. And we don't know. And we act like we don't know why. Um, and you're going to get the energy you put out. You're going to get the energy you surrounded by. I don't even worry about my life being in danger. I mm. used to at some point in time, cause I was surrounded by little young, dumb shit. And I was one of them young, dumb niggas. And I had a couple of friends got murdered. A few of my friends got murdered growing, like in my twenties, few of my friends got murdered. I, so that was a reality. I don't even think if a friend died now, I, I think it's because he got sick of some shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I don't expect none of my friends to get murdered now unless he was in the wrong place and it was just a robbery or something. But outside of that, bro, like, we just got to put people in that position. We got to just, just start thinking, guys. That's, I think that's the whole point of why I, I created the culture referee. Because you, you need somebody to say, y'all niggas is tripping. You better tell them. Okay, so... Offset did a really dope um, launch in for his... We redid James Brown? Yeah. How'd you like that? Do you think that it was smart of him to do? Do you think that he'll start doing more stuff like this? I think content is always great. If the content is great enough that you bring it up on a culture report, he did, he did his job. Because niggas put content out every day, B. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Said, niggas die every day, B. Niggas put content out every day, B. <laughs> Nobody be Love caring. a paid and full quote. Um, but I think that... What I liked about it most is, like, I think nowadays rappers act too cool to kind of do marketing and stuff like that. Like, they think their music's just supposed to sell. So the fact that... It's just not rappers. It's all artists. Yeah, everybody, right. So I think that the fact that he even, like, I I like to see good marketing, good strategic branding, really, like, thought put into it. Not just, oh, I'm going to throw something out and the people's supposed to buy it. So I thought that was really dope. Speaking of that, one of your favorite female rappers... Who? Yeah, he had to think about it because he don't like female rappers. Um, Doge Cat, she lost like 200,000 followers on IG. See, I took it. I just want y'all to say I took it. Go ahead. Because he knows true. Um, she lost like 200,000 followers on IG because she's pretty much telling her fans not to be stands. Like, she was like, they the, the fans were writing her like, can you just tell us you love us? And she was like, no, I don't even know y'all. Like, she was just eating them up. And then her fans called them, referred to themselves as kittens or something like that. And she was like, no, don't, I don't want kittens. Why y'all naming yourself? I thought it was something to do with uh, her dating, like, a guy who, like, is, like, racist or something like that or, like, did something sexist. I would love that. I missed that part. beat up a woman. And then she, they kept, and then she's like, and then she was like, I'm fucking him right now. As they was like, please, Doja Cat, leave him. And she was like, he's fucking me right now as I type this. Like, Oh, I missed that part. I just seen her yelling at the Shout family. out. Listen, uh, Doja's manager is uh, my bro, G, Gordon. Love him. Um, shout out to Gordon. Um, but what I would just say is that some artists are just not made to be with their fullest potential. Because mm-hmm. that's dumb. And it's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And it's something in her head that's making her rebel against the people who made her which is the dumbest thing you could do as an as anybody a politician artist anybody in the light so you know i just 
I think Doja has shown us her whole career that she don't give a fuck with y'all niggas. It's true. And as long as we supporting her, who gives a fuck? Like, the only people we should be worried about talking about is the people that we're not supporting. Losing followers don't mean losing popularity. It doesn't mean losing money. I don't mean nothing. Like, I don't think, I don't think people see her following and be like, oh my God, Doja has so many followers, blah, 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 blah. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? She still has, um, let me just see real quick. She still has, uh, on Spotify, she still has 51 million monthly subscribers. Yeah. Fuck them 200,000 people. So that's how she feels. And until she gets down to 5,000 monthly subscribers, right? that's when shit going to hit the fan. <laughs> but losing a couple of stands, she probably don't want that anyway. Plus, Doja Cat remind me of Charles Barkley. She don't want to be a role model. She don't want to be that for y'all. That means she probably got some demons. She fighting her fucking self, and she's like, y'all don't want to be like me. Imagine, imagine fighting demons every day, and people are worshiping you. Mm-hmm. Like imagine every day waking up feeling like I'm not good enough, or even if it's something with your mother, your dad, or something, or... Feeling like you don't fit in, and then the world you you might not know how to receive that. That's a good way. People don't really look yeah. At like it I don't I, like one thing about me. I don't ever want to. I don't. I don't. I don't down people because everybody go through some bullshit. I done said some fucked up shit in my life. It's just sometimes that's just what we at, and we got to get it out. But I feel like when you set out to make music and be a star, you know what comes with it. So if you didn't want to be a superstar and you didn't want fans and you didn't want this, like why was that your career path in the first place? Like you should have did something else. You could have been walking at Starbucks and nobody would have been bothering you. Or you could just put out, put out music. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. That doesn't mean I want y'all to like me. Mm -hmm. That means I want y'all to like love me. That just means I want to rap. Like, it's like us on this podcast. Like, what if we were just doing this because we like doing this, and then it blows up? Now we're going to be like, fuck y'all. No. We, we, put a, we put something in the world. The world saw it, loved it, and they came back to the table. Yeah, that's one, one of the comments. I'm telling you, some artists don't want fame. I can't lie to you. I don't want fame. Like, I want this show to be the biggest show in the world, but I don't want fame. That's a contradiction. I know it is, right? But yeah. what do I want more? That is the question. Show to be the biggest motherfucking show in the world. So I'm going to have to just deal with what comes with it. Mm -hmm. And when I don't want to, you know why celebrities have big ass houses? Anybody know that? I always wondered that. Feel more spacey? No. Keep away from them? They can't leave the house. Oh. They need a a bowling alley. They need a basketball court. They need a gym. They need a sauna. They can't leave the fucking house. Yeah, that shit is annoying. I was out with Tiana one time and she's doing nothing like sitting there and people are just recording you while you're doing literally nothing the whole time. I couldn't deal with that all day. Like, bro, I'm drinking well, then, a glass might, of water. Well, then, Vanessa, do you want to come sit here and ask questions? <laughs> that's going to happen. If you out, it's just the way the world works. It's just, like I said, I'm a, people, I want people to listen to this to understand something. I'm a manager first. Mm-hmm. Manager's first job, first call of duty is to manage expectations. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to be famous, but that's what's going to come with it. Cool. You got when you go out, don't be a dick. Because if you're a dick, there's a chance that your money gonna slow down. It's just a, it's just a game. It's it's just that's all it is. It's just, bro, we making people famous for nothing. Mm, every and then day. we keep making them famous for nothing. We can't expect something from them. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that about Doja, but I'm saying Doja Cat came in the game with hits, right? Sure so she probably didn't have to, and she's really talented. So she probably didn't have to go through the shit that everybody else go through. Right, she didn't have to go through the. Fr- I've never seen Doja Cat freestyling against men. Have you? Mm, that's a good point. So though. I'm trying to say she. So she. She. And then another thing that we don't factor in is that when you have mixed breed kids, if they were raised in a house with their white families, they have white ideologies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because they look black doesn't. That's why when you was mm-hmm. getting on Drake about why is he not standing up? He grew up in a white household. Yeah, it took a he while for him to even realize he was black. Whole perspective on black and white issues. Because his mother was white. Mm-hmm. So when we out there, so when you got other niggas that said fight that, you got them Dr. Umar's, the white devils. He's like, well, my mom's not a devil and I love her. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? So you can't really expect that. Doja Cat grew up in a white household. Her mother is white. But that's why mixed kids have identity issues. She has they a don't black know which father's talent. Yeah, she got father, the, <laughs> she no, got the her talent. Father's like a, uh, her father's like a big guy on Broadway. Or like he's, a, he's a performer on Broadway. Like, and she didn't grow up in the house with him as far as what I, I know from like just hearing stories mm-hmm. yeah so she didn't grow up with him you said no because he was doing she was just like every at least we know black men aren't discover, discriminating when it comes to not raising their kids they're not just leaving black women right they, wide open they leave in white women too on the table <laughs> everybody can get it everybody can be left alone <laughs> i will leave everybody kids i mean shit speaking of leaving your kids six nine recently 
did a collaboration with Kodak Black. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, six nine got like new babies. He's not taking care of allegedly, but we're not talking about that. Oh my god, we're talking about that. the collab between him and Kodak Black. So. All right, Kodak has, I mean, not Kodak, 6 9 has been trying to do all type of things to stay relevant. He switched over to the Spanish charts. He is Spanish. Um, yeah, but he, he wasn't, yeah, well, okay, let's, let's, you always go back when nobody else wants you. But anyway, um, so the community, because, you know, we've been having this selective outrage, as you like to refer to it, with rapping and snitching and the lines got real blurred because everybody was messing with Gunna. And now you got somebody big like Kodak making a song with 6 9 um, Do you think the song is going to chart first? Yeah. Definitely, 100%. I wonder how... What I like about the 6 9 situation is the selective outrage, right? Uh, 6 9 didn't get any playlist and he gets no support. And he's labeled a snitch, all mm -hmm. right? And uh, a lot of people lab label Gunner the same thing, but Gunner got support. Everywhere. Right? Um, from the system, not the culture. That's the interesting part. It wasn't like rappers embrace Gunner. It was Gunner. Does he have any features on his album? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's not because he didn't probably want none. That's probably because nobody wanted to stand with him. They're going to stand with him now, though, because yeah, he's winning. Yeah. So to me, it feels like we in our culture, we put money over everything. Okay. And as long as money is made, it's like, yeah, it's like it's like the Kiki Palmer shit. We so stupid. The Kiki Palmer shit. Uh, she well, she's up, but the family is broken. Mm. Or somebody snitching, and it's like, oh, or, or somebody going through something. It's like, bro, like, yeah, yeah. Look at him and the James and, and Vanessa broke up because James, but but James getting money, mm -hmm. and it's like, bro, it's it's the dumbest shit to me. Like it's like, what's winning? We have to define that in our culture. Because if winning is just money, then we should be fucking with 6 9 Right? If winning is just money. But it's not just money. It's a few other things. But it's interesting to me how 6 9 paid Kodak a million dollars for a verse. Mm -hmm. Kodak did it. How many people in, in the world can make a million dollars in 30 minutes? That's rare, right? Like, just be clear, right? I mean, unless you're a boxer, but you got to go eight rounds. Somebody, a nigga who could just say... Like, I manage creatives. Kodak probably had that verse done an hour or two. Mm -hmm. It was over. A million dollars an hour or two. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have did it just for the sake of saying I did it. I made a million dollars off one verse. Right. Just for the sake of that. But here come the street niggas. This some bullshit. This some bullshit. This some fucked up shit. Kodak, you don't know what you're doing. Bro, these kids don't give a fuck about nothing but money. You see what, you see what Kodak's response was to Boosie? Nigga, I made a meal. No, what? it was, nigga, you went to jail and within an hour you it put your car your for sale. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about if Boosie a real nigga. It's not about if Boosie stood tall. It's about money. It's about, nigga, shut your broke ass up. Right. You couldn't even, you started I selling Cam, assets. I saw Cam Newton, a clip of Cam Newton arguing with some kids. Some kids. And they're like, you ain't got no rings. And he's like, you ain't either. And he's like, but guess what I got? A bank account. And it's like, so what? So what, my nigga? Who cares? Like, we really think money saves us. Or money cools us. It doesn't. Money exposes us. Mm -hmm. Money exposes us. Money exposes who we are. And I just want to see how this 6 9 thing play out with the next nigga that he asked for a, 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 a feature from and what that nigga say. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm that nigga, man. So I'm like, man, shit. Kodak just did it. He got a million dollars, man. Fuck all that, man. Just do it. But morals have to come in at some point. Like... That's like, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. We got to decide what matters. I think street culture should not run our culture. That's what the should. people in my DMs were saying. So they were like, you have to be able to separate business from. Oh, now. You know why we say that? I was like, y'all you know didn't feel that, that way before. Can I tell you we say that? Because money's involved. Yep. The minute that it's like three niggas just came in here and beat my ass. Stomped me out on camera. Now it's like, Ray, what do you want to do? How much they got for me? <laughs> how much they got i want them niggas dead by the way but i'm like you know what i'm saying like that's the world we live in bro we just dumb we in our culture we got to figure out what matters and what doesn't and it's that simple and to me what six nine did and mind you don't go after me y'all because i got real street niggas in my family <laughs> and i got real street niggas as friends and they always be like fuck that you can't say that but i'm like bro based on the facts that i have i don't blame them yeah i'm i'm 
Based on the agree. facts that I have, I don't blame him. I think we also unrealistic. Like you being loyal to sh- the street, why a black man still being loyal no, to no, something? No, but, it's, but it's, it's deeper than that. that it's just it's deeper than that. that. It's just y'all know you you could look at you could look at six nine original crew, right? Mm-hmm. Go look at the original video. Mm-hmm. Who looked like him? Who looked like him in the original video? Mm-hmm. Everybody else was black, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did that tell you? They knew they had the Mexican kid. Mm-hmm. And they knew they was going to turn the Mexican kid up. They knew it. They knew he was the standout. It's different. It's just, a, though, it's business. It's business. But you shouldn't have let him so close to the street shit. Because now he stopped buying it. Mm-hmm. Now he think he Now really he that. think he that. And now y'all show, now y'all want to humble him. Show him he not that. And then he shows you he really ain't that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Surprise. it's war. Come on, man. Dog, come on, man. You don't bring a, you don't bring a nigga that ain't built for it to the party. You don't bring a nigga built for it into the party. You don't go cheat with your pastor. <laughs> you go cheat with the bartender, the nigga who's like, uh, nigga, everybody drunk at the bar. You don't cheat with your pastor. And if you do cheat with your pastor, it's at the bar because he's drunk too. <laughs> you don't cheat with your pastor because nobody does that, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got to be smart about how we move. And we're not thinking as a culture. We have to. Okay, That's why so. the culture report. Netflix has a um, documentary that's coming out about female rap. And why you, what's, what's the face? I'm tired. I'm, that, that's the biggest something? thing that's Can happening right something? now. Ain't, men gotta, ain't doing that. I got to say this. I'm so tired of white corporate America invading hip hop. Oh, that's and not where I thought using, like it. using their dollars of influence to control our narrative. Say it again. I'm on the same page. With I'm you, so tired of that. Like, like, for example, somebody comes in here right now and they say, hey, Ray, I got a million dollars for you. For the culture report, I want to I want to sponsor it. I'm like hell yeah, but Ray, you gotta wear a dress, <laughs> nigga. Fuck you, <laughs> right? See what I'm trying to say, I'm not gonna. I don't care how much money you have. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna change who I have to be for you. That's why the music business is stupid. That's why we losing right now. You wanna know why the music business is losing? Because money is involved, and we got money people telling us y'all can't do that. Mm. How do I wish? Do you think? If Spotify and all that shit was around right now in the fucking 90s when Pac and them was running it, <laughs> eh, Pac would have smacked the shit out of mm-hmm. Daniel Eck. <laughs> he would have smacked the shit out of one of these. He would have smacked the shit out of who? He would have. Don't tell me what I'm, how I'm going to make my music. And guess what? Jimmy Iovine would have been standing right behind him. Yup. Now, because money is involved, you got these people that's like, man, we're on fire. Man, y'all not on fire. Streaming is nothing but perpetual radio. That gives you stats for bumps that you hit. A hundred years from now, every song on Spotify is going to be fucking gold. A hundred years from now, it's perpetual radio. Every time someone listens, you get paid. It's all it is, bro. It's just, it's just interesting to me how I just, I just don't like when we won't stand for nothing. Like money is the only motivation, bro. That shit is whack as fuck to me. If money was my motivation, I'd be working at a label right now full time. Because guess what they're going to tell me to take that job? It's one thing they, I have to do if I take a label job right now. I have to stop this. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't think that's by design? Right. Nigga, we don't want you talking. Right. We want you signing these little black niggas who are stupid to our deals so we can keep making money and send our kids to college. Only difference is that one of them kids that I didn't help could kill my kid while he in college. You don't have to worry about that with your kids. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like how we start off the show. Talking about Gilly and his son. Mm-hmm. Think about it. No matter how much money Gilly makes or how, how big million dollars worth the game is, what white people don't understand about us is we cannot escape it. Mm-hmm. It will come to our front door. And if it don't come to our front door, they'll kill our kid. If it don't, it don't they'll kill our brother. They'll kill somebody next to us. Dog, we can't escape it. That's why we can't put money over everything. Agreed. Um, so, on a positive note... Jamie Foxx is back. Um, he came, made a statement <laughs> saying, like, he's good. He actually just, I think his movie's number one on Netflix right now, Who Clone Tyrone. Did you get to see that movie yet? No, not yet? Okay. I'll try to. I'll try to watch it. Um, my question is, where's the balance? So, like, Jamie Foxx just came back from what we're assuming was some serious health issues, and the first thing people are saying is that, it's a clone and it's not the same person. And it's like, how much do celebrities owe to their fans when they're going through certain things? Man, this is some interesting shit, y'all. Why the fuck do that, does that matter? If it's a, what, what? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, 
so all his, the hard part for me is that, number one, we've worked with Jamie. We've done a couple of records with him. I know his man, Breon, who he signed to. It's hard for me to talk about certain shit. Like, sometimes you just don't want to go through shit in public. Right. The best kind of relationships are the private ones. That's oh, why. I, saw, I see somebody I, I ain't know was there. Best kind of relationships mm. are the private ones. Keep people out your motherfucking business. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that especially because he's not one of those people who always had us in his business. Like he's always been private about his dating life and things like that. Like, why do people feel so invasive? Like he doesn't have to share with you his fucking medical record. I'll tell you something. I think, I think people since the beginning of history have felt wanted to know. I just think now we can actually tweet about it or post on Instagram and the world can now we're like, it's trending. It's we all, we all wanted to know. Now you don't remember Mike, they used to say Michael Jackson slept in a, in the chamber with his monkey and shit. I mean, you know, as you get older, you're like, damn, that had to be some bullshit. At least I hope it was. <laughs> you know, like, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. now, if Michael Jackson was who he was in 2023, we would have pictures with the chamber. Facts. Niggas would be at the chamber right now. Trying to sleep in it, paying thousands. Niggas would be at the thousand. chamber right now, taking pictures. Oh, it's just different. It's just a different world. Some bitch, Michael Jackson was fucking, would have wait with hot while after they finished mm -hmm. fucking while he was asleep, snuck and took pictures of the chamber. It's going, bro, it's the game. It's just the game. It's just too much access. You know how I live my too life? Too much access. Can I tell you how I live my life, y'all? I'm going to give y'all a little secret about it. You work the whole day. Nope. This is, why, this is how I live my life. Remember everybody in here. Remember when y'all was kids? Everybody listening. Remember when y'all was kids? Remember the first girl in the neighborhood to suck dick? <laughs> I'm going to teach y'all the most magnificent lesson while you laughing. Let's just be clear. Everybody remembers the first girl that sucked dick, right? We, we all was about, about 12, 13, right? Okay, cool. Everybody was Jack like... Jack was doing no. some inappropriate Everybody stuff. was like, don't kiss her, remember? Don't drink after her. Oh, you kissed her, oh, she sucked dick. Oh my God, you was with the girl that sucked dick. Remember that? Everybody, we all had one of those in the neighborhood. What we didn't know was in 10 years, all the girls was going to be sucking dick, and some of the niggas too. <laughs> Not some of the niggas too. Now, what's the point that of in. that lesson? The point of that lesson is... Who gives a Actually. fuck what people are saying? They just ain't reached the level to understand where you coming from. I like the way you did that. I'm, that's how I live. So that's why niggas laughing. I literally, because I'm like, damn, like, we used to, I mean, you ostracized her. Wake is still oh, trying to figure out. Oh, you kissed her. Oh, my God. She sucked dick. She sucked dick. All of y'all going to be sucking dick in 10 years. Everybody. Now y'all going to be sucking dick. Now y'all going to be bragging about how good you do it. Mm. See where you going. So we were just too immature to understand that that was a natural thing. Point made. Listen. Point is, is that, so at, at my age now, there might be people that's like, Ray, you need to be doing this. Nigga, that's because that's what you think I need to be doing at the age I am. I, move, I live my life like I'm an 80-year-old man. I do what the fuck I want, how I want. I live my personal life just like that. I will do what I want when I want, period. And when my friends be looking at me like I'm crazy, I'm like, yeah, nigga. <laughs> I see you seven years from now. Let's see you fucking <laughs> right. crazy. Mm -hmm. When my hair ain't got, I ain't got no grays, nigga still living good. All my friends are like, you stupid. You, oh yeah. You need to have a job. You need to work. Now nah, I'm going to go for my dream. Mm -hmm. You stupid ass nigga. Now nah, those same friends that asked me to borrow money. Mm -hmm. Who was right? Tell him. All right. So Bow Wow's reportedly being sued for stealing money from a 10 year old. Um, the young artist paid Bow Wow 15000 for a feature and he never completed but he accepted the money um can you give artists that are looking to get features from stop artists that's on stop already? paying for features wait till you get there they'll come to you i mean I pay money to to get exposure pay money to market your music pay money to 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 get hot get a better beat when we did when we when we did sweetie's tap in record you know like mm -hmm record blew up i'm pretty sure we would have asked the same guys beforehand they probably would have charged crazy money mm -hmm. but the record got hot everybody wants to be a part of something hot why are you worrying about paying for a feature that artist is going to take your money and go spit it at the strip club tonight <laughs> ain't going to shout you out ain't going ain't going to repost you ain't going to do nothing but you got his voice on the song Man, if I was an artist, if I wanted to do a feature, I'll go take your fucking, I'll take a, say if I wanted to do a record with, give me an artist, just give me an artist, somebody, you want to do a record? Glorilla. Glorilla. I want to do a record, well, she ain't, she, she kind of ain't been around long enough, but I want to do a record with, let's say, Playboy Cardi. Okay. I'm going to just go find some acapellas, I'm going to hit a DJ friend like Wake and say, give me some acapellas of Playboy Cardi, if 
find a verse that you probably don't know. Put that on my goddamn song. Mm. By the time Playboy Cardi hear it and want to take it off, the record worked. Mm. That's that ask for permission. No, don't, Bro, ask, for permission. don't ask for permission. Ask, ask for, for forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah. Bro, why are you paying for features? Them niggas don't want to hang with you. Now, if you want to pay for a feature because you want to get in the room and make the relationship, now that's okay. a gamble you take it. Okay, I want, I want money back on my record. How much you want? $75,000? Right, I'm flying the money back. I'm flying to bring the money myself. I want to meet him. I want him to know who I am. That's different. Seventy five. Can you 000? put in the contracts when you're doing stuff like that that they can. have to promote to? Of course you can. Okay. So I, that would be the underlying stipulation and of they don't giving want to. you that money. They don't want to promote. They don't feel like it. Facts. But you're gonna they don't sue? promote their own. You're going to sue the nigga that you... <laughs> what's that nigga name? Um, yeah. Batman Kibo tried to sue Gunner? Everybody clown him, right? Nigga, take that, take that L, right? Damn. Okay, cool. Bro, you cannot win. That's, That's why the best L. thing to do is get hot. Everything else. We got the number place. one podcast in the world. Like, like Joe Budden is like, Ray, I'm going to do your shit. I fuck with your shit. I, I don't fuck with a lot of podcasts, but I love, I'm coming to Atlanta to do your shit. That, that wasn't, imagine if I asked him to do it. Right. It would have been a bill. <laughs> Nigga, it would have been a, uh, it would have been a No. Fuck a bill, it would have been a fuck no. I didn't ask him. I just did it. I just do something dope and niggas come running. Not running, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Build your shit. I am who I am. I am Ray Daniels. You don't think I know, man, I'm texting Roddy Rich Man right now. You don't think I know all these people? Mm -hmm. You don't think it's easy for me that in the beginning when I started this podcast and say, yo, you want to get on my show? Of course it was. But guess what? I'm just like everybody else. I don't want no favor, nigga. Don't do me no favor, nigga. I'm going to show you I'm the shit. Then you're going to come fuck with me. Oh, man. I know that's right. Quavo reportedly got robbed on a yacht in Miami over the weekend. Um, I would assume yachts are kind of off oh, limits. Get, somebody, somebody, That's somebody what I'm is, is giving Pirates of the pirate. Caribbean or some shit. But it's like, <laughs> shouldn't you have security with you on the yacht? Hey, listen, if they hit the security, they you done. You done. It's just not fair. There's so many celebrities in Miami, rich people all over. But who's getting robbed? Black men. Nah, stop that. Stop that shit. Why? Stop that. Don't do that. Why? Rob everybody. Guess what? Why there we is a, always There's a target. billionaire right now who will walk in his room and, you won't know. and be like, how you guys doing? I'm such and such. Nobody would know he's a billionaire. Rappers be like, got more money than your mama. Fuck your bitch. Suck the Two nigga. watches on one Of on. course I'm going to rob this nigga when I see him. <laughs> you just told me how you fucked my bitch. I just but fucked I'm your bitch. But I'm also talking about like, how I got a stick too. So it's like. You ain't got no stick in Miami though. You ain't got no stick in Egypt, nigga. You ain't got no stick in... You have a stick in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. That's where you live. You ain't got no Guns stick registered. in Miami. And you're on a fucking yacht. You, you living your life. Damn. Good come up. Okay, Um, before I switch gears, ASAP supposedly low-key dissed Travis Scott. Um, He said something of the nature like, you stole my flow and I stole your bitch. Referring, and people speculated that was Travis Scott. The big issue here is they're saying Rocky didn't even make up his own kind of flow. They're saying that he went down to Texas and started doing the chopped and screwed thing. So it was like, how are you trying to claim a flow that wasn't yours to begin with? Do you remember when Rocky went down to Texas and was doing the chopped yeah. and screwed stuff? I think it's, why does that matter? Well, because- no, I'm saying, why does any of it matter? Where you started or? It's ego shit. It's always ego. It's ego shit. Bro, listen, this is how we start the show. We have to start killing the ego of the black man. We got to start not killing it, but we got to start letting it down a little. It's okay. Just let it down. Just get over yeah. yourself. I agree. That goes back to what you were saying about pride being the biggest factor in why there's so much violence here. We got to mm -hmm. figure out, remove the ego from the room. and Yeah, remove the ego. Okay. So, going on to my American black dad. How do we feel about child support? I'm sorry. What, what, is, what is it? What? How do we feel about child support? I don't understand the question. There's no context. If all right, so usually <laughs> when people, the parents, I don't are pay no it, more so I don't together, know how to feel about it. That don't, I don't. I don't do a lot of shit, but I still could figure out if I was with it for it, if I think it's good or if I think it's bad. Like how do I? I know typically people say they don't support black men, don't want the white, the government telling them how to do their family and stuff like that. I'm not that guy. The most important people in my life are my kids. Uh, if my kids didn't live in the same house with me and I had to pay child support, I will, I will want to make sure it's right for them. I don't, I don't care about that. It's my kids. I don't, like, literally, I don't care what it costs. If it's my kids, I'm going to do it because I don't, that's how I treat myself. If I want something, I'm going to get it. So if my kids want something, I want them to have it. 
there was a lady going viral because she was saying that men should get ahead of the game and put themselves on child support because that would stop a lot of the issues that they have when trying to co-parent with the woman because the woman really wants something. If it is just money, then you could go to courts and get it figured out. That I, don't even, I, I don't even get into that shit. I, to be honest with you, it's hard for me to even get into like what child support is or any of that other stuff. I don't get into none of that. Because DJ that. Mustard's wife just got her child support payments cut in half. Cut down, I think, cut down to like, like 30% yeah. to like 30% of the original payment. Yeah, it, it yeah. was a big loss. Um, but the issue is that she was with him from the beginning. So people like, how do you figure out what is appropriate? Like if I'm a wife and I'm dedicated to being the backbone of your career and making sure. Oh you, my God. With what? that shit. Oh, well, I, the backbone of my career. Well, come on, man. We got to stop this stupid shit. You the backbone of my family structure, not the backbone of my career. Well, we don't know how involved she was. By the way, do y'all know how most women, do y'all know the, the, the female millionaires? Do y'all know the, the, the divorce, the, the biggest percent of female millionaires is from divorce. Mary Ridge, huh? Come on, man. We it's, it's certain shit is just like dumb. Like, hey, listen, man. You wasn't in the gym shooting. If, but if I gave you the ability uh, to be able to go give, to the you gym and me shoot, what you, you would gave me what you gave what you would have gave a nigga that worked at McDonald's too. No, Stop not that. necessarily. I might have had to go to work if you worked at McDonald's. You still have gave me a kid. It's chicks that get more. It's, it's niggas at McDonald's with kids. Not it. Can't relate, like you said. That's what, that's my point. My brain can't y'all, even so, go there. So y'all try, trying to create this narrative of like I was there holding down the f- f- you hold you held down a family and for that you should be compensated. But don't say you hold my held my career down. I'll give you that. Because guess what? I'm gonna have to go work regardless. If I was chasing my dream, I was working the nine to five. I still gonna have to leave the house for eight to fucking ten hours every day to go pay pay the bills. Right or wrong? It's just that I'm making exceptional money. All right, I got a question, and I want to put the roles on the other side then, because, like, Wendy Williams' husband just, like, now he got to sell his house and all that stuff because he's not getting, what's the payments that they get when you get divorced and they got alimony? He, he's not getting his alimony checks anymore. But he was her manager, so it's like he was kind of a back a support in her career. So it's like some people are very hands-on in their spouse's career. So That was her manager slash husband difference the woman that you took my divorces they're usually no nah, i ain't no usually nothing co-founders they are the wife. of the of, of they the, are the, fa- wife. the they are billionaires are the wife. they are the wife why are we this is they a, don't go to work. this is this they are the wife man yeah why are we this is dumb like i think wh- wives do more than just support the kids i'm not saying i did i say they only support the kids or i said that they support the family structure okay that's what i'm saying they support the family structure should DNA tests be mandatory when yes. women give birth? Oh, you said that mad quick. Yes. I just saw a video of a guy who was basically saying he found out his nine-year-old son with his namesake ain't his. That girl should be in jail. Yeah. He said that happened. It did? That, that the, happened. the woman should go to jail. What? The junior's crazy. He got, he got, he got to change the yeah, name. Yeah, you got to come up with he that. Gotta change that name. You got to change that. Back. I agree I need with my that. name back. That with happened. Respect, I'm gonna say my junior for my junior. Right. My not, for the, not for the person you told me was my junior. Yeah, that's lying crazy. bitch. Yeah. Sorry, kid. Sorry, I love you to death. But you lying bitch. You knew. Bro, what? But the mental psychology that that does to a man. Here's my thoughts on child support. Kid. A man shouldn't pay child support without a DNA test. That should be a law. Now we now we going back that's to child a law. support. If it's mine, if it's his, he should pay for it. But let's prove it. I'm all about that. Listen, I'm proofing the pudding. Draw this blood up. Let's get it going. Send my check in. But um, mentally what that does to me and a lot of people don't talk about those things. I had a, I have a really close friend who was raising a child for about two years. And then when the baby started getting his features, she just stopped answering his phone calls. Cause she realized that he wasn't the father no more. I never had a conversation with him. Didn't. Did you st- are you still friends with her? No, I'm friends with the guy, not the girl. Oh, you I don't. Sh- what I'm saying? You should, you should, you should, you shouldn't be friends with the girl. Nobody should be friends with her. I agree with you. I agree with you. Like, if you don't know, just wait. Just like put the cards on the table. Because the fuck the part is, up to your the the part is you know who ran up in you. That's the part that bothers me. Like you know who ran up in you. Right. You no. Know. Unless you was doing back to backs or some wild stuff. Come on, you know who ran up in you. Come on, let's go. Anyway, I was being mean about that one. All right. Last question. What's the biggest? Well, no. Okay. So you have what? Number one and number 10? Mm-hmm. On the record, on the charts right now. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Everybody clap it up, clap it up. So you kind of predicted this. Last week we talked about it. We said that it was on the way to um, mm-hmm. getting number one. Um, 
what do you think somebody's gonna have to do to be the next rap song to be number one on the billboards? It's always the number one every week. I said rap song. Rap song? Oh, on the billboards. Um, I don't know. No, gonna, he didn't go number one. He didn't one. go number one. Um, I just think it has to be a good song. What makes a good song? Uh, oh, it's, Universal, it's, that's a good one. No, no, not, it, not, it just has to be appeal to more than just your core audience. Mm -hmm. That's how you make a great song. That's why pop music is called pop music because it's popular. But I want to say one thing before we wrap. I was, having a, I was thinking about something the other night. I want to say this. Think about how far the black community would, ha would be right now if we embraced everyone who didn't fit the the mainstream oh no, the fuck what's the word what's the word man people, the, 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 the people are you want to be that traditional mold. traditional mold, the stereotype there we go think about how far black people would be if we embrace all black people not just the black people that fit the stereotypes that we mess with. And I, what really inspired me to say that was Will I Am. Will I Am is probably one of the most gifted human beings to ever walk this earth. And one of the most talented and has done, and he's from the hood, and he's from the hood, and for some reason we embrace people like Dr. Dre over him. And it's because Dre fits the stereotype that from our culture of being a hood nigga, smoke weed, everything else. And Will I Am is the weird kid. But think about how many black people, how many rooms we would be in as a culture if we allowed, if we just took off the chains, the mental chains, and allowed us to all be who we wanted to be, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was thinking about that because I was like, man, what I am is I was watching Kill Bill, and, you know, Kill Bill starts off with the uh, pump it up. Dun, dun, dun. And I was like, fuck, what I am heard that and turned it into a smash, a smash, pump it louder. And I was like, fuck. But he doesn't get the roses and, and, and the credit from the black community, which then makes him lean more to the people, the love he does get. Mm -hmm. But how many people, Tiger Woods, I mean, even a Candace Owens, like because she doesn't agree with black people, we want to disown her and not fuck with her. But that makes us strong as a community to have different voices, different representation, different everything. The reason why there's so much, vol so much violence happening right now is because all the black community celebrates is hood shit. All they celebrate is hood shit. It's like, if you got to be hood to work for us. And it's like, there's some black kids out here that's not hood. Mm -hmm. There's some black kids out here who grew up in two-parent households. And as much as the people who we don't, we, the people that didn't wish they did, I wish I had my father in the house. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. But it's like we, as our community, I was thinking about that. There's so many black people who, just because they don't fit the stereotype, we don't invite them to the barbecue. Mm -hmm. But they one of us. And that shit got to stop. We are not a monolith. We are way more than just hood niggas and bitches that want to twerk and rap about selling drugs and killing each other. I know I'm not that. Yeah, I got bullied growing up because that's my, that, I wasn't. That's my point. We, we, have to, we have to start in our community embracing everyone our color and their stories. Everybody's story ain't I sold dope, didn't start rapping, then went to the league, then bought my mama a house. Every but it story goes to ain't parenting. That. Every, but every story ain't that. And we got to start making that shit cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got to stop making that shit cool. Yeah. Because if we don't, we're going to have a whole bunch of kids who are going to grow up thinking I have to be gangster mm -hmm. to be accepted by my people. And then murders won't go away. I agree with you. Period. Okay. That's the last time I said you can wrap up. Wait I, wait, I got one more real quick. It's not music, but um, I it's just kind of weird. I feel like people are getting younger and sicker. So LeBron James' um, son, Bronny, um, had cardiac arrest earlier um mm -hmm. he's doing better now and they're running tests to determine exactly what caused it but that's horrifying to me that someone that young that should be in peak athletic shape like how are kids these kids nowadays i feel like they're one the pressure that's on them to succeed when you follow him behind father he might be doing some type of either i don't even want to start um, trying to guess what's going on here. But when you have all those, you have the world at your hand. You have access to the best doctors, to the best trainers. I'm pretty sure you're eating well. How does someone that should be in such good shape end up having cardiac arrest? I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I mean, I, that happens every day to kids all around, around the world. 
I hate to celebrate it just because it happened to, I hate to bring it up because it happened to a celebrity because I love LeBron and I know how, everybody knows how much he loves his kids, but I mean, it's just, I mean, bro, it's just, why is Ray not six foot eight and could dunk a ball? <laughs> I'm being honest. I wish I was six foot eight and dunk a ball. Don't you, Don Vito? I probably would have been in the goddamn league if I was, but that's not the way the cards that was out for me. So for me to, I can't, I don't, I can't entertain. He didn't, he's an athlete. And the worst thing that happened is he can't play sports no more. Mm -hmm. It's not like he needs to go to the league to take care of his mother that, or his father. He doesn't have to worry about that. So with that being said, I'm just glad that, the, that his kid is okay. I hope that he recovers fully. And if he can't play basketball, you just can't play basketball. I mean, I, it's, I, it'll be okay. It's I, not it, the end of the world. There are kids out here who are in their house right now starving. And I feel like I can't, I would not be the coach referee if I allowed us to only talk about the high level shit because it was high level shit. There are kids out there who are struggling right now that can't eat. I don't want, I don't need nobody in this room to feel sorry for my kids. There are other kids that we should be worried about, not mine. My kids are going to be fucking fine. They're riding around in their mom, $200,000 truck, eating whatever they want to eat. My kids are fine. I don't, I, I, I don't hurt my kids, but you know what I'm saying, Don? Like, I just feel like sometimes we get so caught up in what happens to the celebrity that we forget that there are people who are really going through real shit every day. And that's why people are killing themselves, and that's why people are committing uh, mass murders, and that's why people are out here fucking up saying they want to be different sexes because people don't know how to deal with all of this information coming in at once. Mm, that's a good one. It's and a lot to It's just a lot. Take. So for me, it's like I just pay for Bronny. I pray, I pray for their family, but it's a whole lot of other kids that need way more than our prayers. They need our help. Mm. Bronny don't need our help. His dad is a billionaire. He's fine. He got this. He got it. All right, no guys. No disrespect, but I'm just being honest, right? And I'm pretty sure LeBron would say the same thing. I got my son, y'all. Yeah. Worry about the other kids. Amen. Perfect. All right, so shout out to our sponsors, Tote and Carry and Yoko Vaca. Shout out to Tote and Carry and Yoko Vaca. Make sure you guys are subscribed to our YouTube channel. You're following us on all platforms, and you're listening to our vocals. What, what would be the right thing? Like, audio. The Listen audio, to the audio, please. On so Tuesdays. Send, send it to somebody, and then send it to us. DM us, and we'll post you. Shout you out. And argue with me in my comments or raise comments because lately I've been arguing with comments. Argue Ray comments, don't argue, but, but go I'll ahead. go. Let's get it. I'll get it. This is the culture report. God show, we are out. Let's go. <laughs>